I'm here to talk about Osmocom KPI counters, rate counters, stat items, and stat um, KPI, for anyone who doesn't know, is just uh, or means key performance indicators and this fancy talk for counters, rate counters. It's everything we can measure. So in the history of the Osmocom project, we've had um, counters or some sort of statistics for a long time. Um, it began actually even before we had LibOsmo Core in uh, OpenBSC in 2009, where we had the, the first type of counters, um, the Osmo counters. Uh, those were within Osmo, uh, OpenBSC um, periodically written to a database, which uh, caused some nice issues later on when we had, especially at the CCC, the event date database grew so long and had all the counters that were, well, appended there every minute. Um, yes, the early integration of counters, so that was keeping track of counters and just getting those counters out um, that we could uh, look at them, visualize them, was just some uh, simple script that even copied the database and uh, dumped the stuff we needed and then, well, did well, visualize them with RD tool or something else. <clears throat> so that was the history. Today we have um, three different implementations for counters to choose from. Um, they do different things. Uh, only two should be used now if you're uh, looking at adding counters. Okay. So white noise space here. Um, you can use them to track a rate of events over time, um, like yeah, location update uh, accepts uh, or requests and rejects and um, calls attempted, calls completed, and then of course you can uh, yeah, visualize those to, to check whether your network is healthy or not. Um, you can track also moment values that change in a discrete manner, so not just uh, rate counters that are monotonically increasing, but um, like having currently active calls or the um, delay of some connection, like how long it, uh, it takes to, to ac acknowledge um, a packet. Um, we can query all of these uh, different counters through the VTY interface, so just show them quick and dirty. Um, we can also query them through the control interface, which is a bit more programmatic uh, approach to query it from script. And um, we also have a stats reporter um, and implementation to basically send all these counters to StatsD and then use whatever you want to visualize them. Um, yes, uh, the Osmocom, or at least the, the, in the Osmocom GSM um, project, we have quite a few different counters, so tracking calls, SMS, location updates, all the, or most of the, the signaling messages, um, what has been attempted, what has been completed, um, also for GPRS attach, PDP context, activation, the, well, the whole bunch, basically. And um, also data sent for GPRS in both ways. Um, yes, and many more like um, reconnects on the, the A side um, or the, the ABIS side with um, OML, RSL. Um, yes, if you want to know within a certain project what, which kind of counters there are, then you can look at the documentation. The um, counters are automatically or periodically uh, regenerated into the documentation to give you an overview of what, what is there. Or you can use uh, show ASCII doc VTY command to basically get the list the same list that the documentation generation does, um, just maybe it, it is more current. Okay, so let's get to the first type of counter. It's, um, we call it Osmo counter, uh, very intuitive. No, that, 
That's intuitive. I'm, I'm getting to the pun with the next counter, which really is counterintuitively named, um, I think. So that's the oldest implementation. has been there since 2009 um, in various stages. So first it was just some fields in a struct that um, get added upon, and then it became a little bit uh, more generalized. So you have names for a counter, and um, it's not just it. Uh, we keep track of them in a central location so you can actually output all the counters at once and don't have to know where they are and, and what, what their name is. It's a very simple interface. You can increment a counter, decrement it. You can get it, reset it, and later on you can um, also get the difference, which will automatically reset it, which was needed um, when the stats D integration got, got added. Um, it's still used today um, for things like active calls or some um, reconnects uh, in, in the MSC and BSC, but it's not really used that much. So maybe five to ten counters or so, I think, in, in uh, the Osmocom GSM world in general. And um, even today, um, I looked in Osmo MSC, it is synced, so only these counters are synced to the database that we still have for the, um, to, to keep track of SMS um, every minute, and you can disable it, and I would strongly advise you, or maybe we want to reverse the logic, if not remove it uh, altogether. Um, so. With the option minus C, you can disable it. Maybe we want to have an option to explicitly turn it on because, I don't know, just noticed that when I looked over the code. So yeah, this is how you use it. Um, Osmo counter alloc with the name. Then when the call is established, for example, you increment it, afterwards you dec decrement it, and then with the VTY interface, show stats will show the ungrouped counters, those are the Osmo counters, and it will show the MSC active calls is currently at three. So the next um, type of counter is the rate counters. Those were an improvement to the Osmo counters introduced in 2010, and um, somehow counterintuitively it is missing the Osmo prefix uh, even today. So. Um, yeah, I was, when I started writing, writing the slides, I put Osmo counters, um, the Osmo stats, stat items, um, and Osmo rate counters, and then I looked through the code and I couldn't find any, and I knew we had quite a lot. Um, so, yeah, it's not Osmo rate counter, it's rate counter. Um, they only increment, though the value you can pass to increment it is a signed integer, so technically you can decrement them, but the logic will, well, maybe it makes sense, but they're only, it should only be used to, to track rates of events, which usually just, yeah, happen uh, monotonously. It uh, automatically tracks the, the rates of these events um, on a per second, per minute, per hour, and uh, daily basis. Um, in that case, it's, yeah, it's not really a rolling average, but at the beginning of each hour, the, um, the hour count is updated. And at the, or not the beginning of each hour, but like one hour after the start of the, um, the program. So in practice, it shouldn't matter because the, the updates before roll over into the, into the next higher um, average or aggregation, I should say. And um, with the rate counters, with the Osmo rate counters, rate counters, um, we also have the concept of groupable counters. So you have a rate, Osmo rate counter group um, for example, to track everything um, that a BSC is doing from the, the view of an MSC. And uh, you can also have an like, MSC group to track stuff that the MSC is doing and keeping track of. And within the groupable counters, you also have, so you can have independent counter groups per peer. So the MSC can track for each BSC separately um, 
how many times it has reconnected, for example. And um, so per peer and tracking per subscriber is also possible. And the rate counters are most widely used in the GSM projects. They're about, uh, well, an infinite number if you count all the um, individual counters that you have for each subscriber, but I uh, think like 30 through 50 different um, items. Yeah, Alex? Um, when, when you say it is possible, you mean it's already implemented, or it's possible as in like someone could uh, sometime implement this in this uh, theoretically uh, possible? What was po what did I say was possible? Uh, it's yeah, uh, it was a per subscriber counters per BSC counters. Yes, that it is, it that's, is that's already implemented, and there, so, so okay. the functionality is there, and also um, we have. Uh, for GPRS, we have, uh, or the GB proxy has per NSVC um, rate counters. And okay, yeah. thank you. Um, so, yeah, this is how you use it. It's a bit more complicated. You need to, uh, so I'll start with the second part first. Uh, you have to define a counter group. Um, just, so, the first is the name, the second is the description. Um, so you can basically yeah, know what it is. Then the stats class global means it's a global thing. You can have per peer and per subscriber um, uh, classes as well. Then after that, you say how many um, counters you have in your counter group. And um, finally, a pointer to uh, the actual counters or the description of the actual counters. And then. Basically the, the top struct, uh, the rate counter description for the rate counters uh, is just an array um, indexed with, with an offset um, that also again has um, a short name and a description, what it does. And afterwards you just uh, allocate the group and when, oh, okay, that's a cut off here. And um, yeah, afterwards you only, or in the most simple case, you only increment it by one and you reference the actual counter. There's also a function, as I mentioned, to increment an arbitrary amount, even a negative amount, but in, the, in most cases, you just want that. Um, yes? Okay, um, I just noticed you have a, a dot in the slide, the handover dot completed. If I remember correctly, we use the dot in the control interface to separate. Is it yes, part of your? Yes, I'm coming to that, okay. and I'm pretty sure that uh, okay, Lucy will then. will talk about that as well in his um, CCC review. Um, but well spotted. Uh, just, hmm? uh, sorry, just one, one, one more question. Uh, is it also possible to? Uh, Notify uh, like some some external entity about each event when you call a rate control increase to, so to notify right when this event um, fires, uh, not from the rate counter or any counter system, but uh, I mean it's possible to to dispatch a signal, which is what is used uh, in in the code in in cases where we need that. So. Um, Because in, in, in the most simple case, this will just increment um, memory somewhere or value in memory somewhere. So we, uh, I, I'll get to the reporting where we have a timer and then we go through all the counters and report the values. Um, yes, the, the dot separator. Let's leave it at that for now. Um, so through the VTY, we can show statistics, which um, for the example, we have the yeah, handover completed, which is zero events per second and per minute, which uh, uh, the reason for that is that it's already quite some time ago, and so we have one per day, one per hour at the moment, but less than one per minute. Um, and yeah, the next one is just uh, 
the peer-based statistics, uh, which have the, the number of the peer, which is, of course, then an individual um, designation, uh, and uh, statistics about this peer. So um, the newest counter-implementation from 2015 is uh, Osmo stat item. Um, it's in concept similar to the rate counter. Um, we also have groups. We have the global peer classes, but it's not a rate counter. Um, it just stores uh, arbitrary values and um, keeps track of a bunch of them. Um, the items or the stat items can have units, which is quite nice, and I think um, something we should uh, implement in the rate counters as well because as you saw there, the name actually has packets at NS level and bytes at NS level, and uh, having basically P or PKT and just uh, bytes as unit might be nicer in, in yeah, tracking that and automating that. Um, and yes, uh, it'll keep track of multiple measurements, so you have uh, I believe this is used or supposed to be used for averaging, but uh, when I looked at the code that reports the values to, to StatsD, um, only the last value is reported back, so averaging is not used yet, but um, uh, can implement uh, some custom reporter or anything and um, then do averaging yourself. So, yes. And also, for the Osmo stat item, I have only found one item implemented within the whole of the, the GSM Osmocom world, which is the NSVC alive response time in milliseconds as units. And uh, yeah, but only one is not very much. Um, here again, you have a, a group where you specify the name, the description, you have um, an array of actual stat items uh, with, again, the name, the description, then you have the unit, and the 16 is um, how, many, how many values uh, should be kept. And yeah, you again allocate the, the stat item group and then don't have an increment, but you have an Osmo stat item set um, where you just set the actual value. And in VTY, you just get the response. Um, have a feature matrix if you're, you're looking at, at the counter. So we have uh, basically, it should have been orange, uh, the dirty gray there. Um, so the Osmo counter is in my opinion, legacy. It's not really deprecated in the code, but um, I guess we have full replacement with the rate counter and Osmo stat items. Um, those two are supported. Um, the Osmo counter has some counters, 10. The rate counters are, are quite um, prominently uh, present in the code, and the Osmo stat item, um, so yeah, is just one, so probably was, uh, I don't know how, how it happened, but maybe implemented for just this, this one item and then was good enough. Maybe it's some branch. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> the stats item branch. Um, all of those can be displayed in the VTY, as I showed. Um, access from the control interface is restricted to the Osmo counter and rate counter which, I mean, there's no reason why it should be, just that um, it wasn't implemented yet, but if you only have one counter, then you probably don't miss that. Um, all of those can be exported to the, through the stats reporter via StatsD. Um, come to that in a second. And um, yeah, the Osmo counters are just global counter names, uh, uh, while the rate counters and Osmo stats items are uh, groupable and have these per peer subscriber values. Yes. Uh, so when you say that Osmo counter is legacy, uh, you think it should be replaced with rate counter, right? 
Um, most of the OSMO counters that are still used are used as rate counters. But as I mentioned, um, so f with the OSMO counter basically lets you do both because you have increment and decrement. So um, what is still implemented as OSMO counter is basically the currently active calls, which is not a rate counter. A rate counter would be MO calls attempted, MO calls complete, completed, MT calls attempted, MT calls completed. The, and so that would need to be migrated to a, a stat item, but uh, basically the, the two new counters um, can do everything that the rate counter does. And then. Is it possible to get the absolute value of uh, rate counters and stat items as well? That's the first one is right. the absolute value, and mm -hmm. then you have one per second. Uh, so, yeah. And this basically is the absolute. Right. And that's, that's intentional, and that, that's not likely to change any time. Yes, that's intentional. And yeah. Yeah, and the, the and I mean for the stat items, you always get the. I get access to all the values that are. You get access the 16 to all in in, in the code you do, um, okay. but uh, through statsd, it only reports the last value back. Cool. Okay, so yes, um, then with an Osmocom or the Bosmo core, we have uh, the concept of a stats or statistics reporter, um, and we can. So any kind of counter, as I said, is uh, supported by that. Um, we have an implementation that basically can connect to a statsd instance or uh, write in that format. Um, and we also have an implementation that uh, basically writes to our logging framework. So whatever is configured as logging target, we use the DL stats um, category and log with log level info. So um, basically there every minute or whatever you, uh, you want the interval to be, you can output that into a log file or syslog or something. Uh, is, it, uh, is, is it possible to configure interval uh, pure like a group? So I uh, may have, uh, I, I may want some stats, uh, you know, every like five so seconds. The, and the short minutes. answer is no. Um, as you can see, so this is the config snippet, uh, the relevant parts, the stats interval, so logging interval is globally configurable only. So you can't even change between the stats D and the, the log output. It's just one global Osmo timer that then that then um, report. Okay, anyway, so it's uh, just one timer that then calls all the stats reporters and um, run basically runs whatever they do. And then you know, for, for both these backends, you have um, the stats reporter statsd, where you can um, basically say how much you want to report. So do you want only want the, the global um, values, or do you want the peer and um, subscriber values uh, output as well? Because those can be quite verbose if you have like 20, 50, 100 um, BSCs, um, and where to log to. And um, yeah, for the for the um, log output as well. So this um, stats interval, you said the stats reporters they get called at this interval. What if um, so? What about external polling? Could uh, could I have a stat reporter that? queries all the counters and and so on internally instead of I mean you you can have that but uh, then you would just uh, I'd have to think about it but um, generally you probably wouldn't do anything in the in the internal timer callback but 
uh, or in the internal timer callback, you could update some things and then um, have your own socket and listen to it. I think if you wanted to do polling, you probably just use the control interface to poll those values that you want to poll. Um, uh, and not use an internal reporter, because True. if you want to read some counters, you can always do that over the control interface from an external process at whatever time you want for whatever counters you want. But just an idea. Yes. Yeah, so just, just one uh, last uh, note is that yeah, the reason why I'm asking for 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 different uh, rates is because uh, some uh, counters, uh, for example, a number of currently um, associated uh, sorry currently used channels, uh, we uh, right now are pulling very frequently uh, because uh, we then uh, do min max in the processing. If, if I can interrupt, yeah, um, you could do that with the stat items because the, basically. Whenever the value changes, you uh, or, or in, with an internal timer, you just add this value very quickly, once a second or something, and then you configure it to hold 60 values in the stat item, and then you can access basically the whole last minute um, what the value was. And I mean, yeah, the current code just outputs the last. Uh, the last value, which might not make sense in that case, but you could do an average, or you could also output the the average, the mean, the min, and the max, and the, the standard deviation, or something like that. So possible, but um, not implemented right now. Okay. Okay. So um, just uh, last slide going forward. Um, I guess yeah, it makes sense to migrate from Osmo counter to Osmo rate counter, uh, which it should be called then. Um, or to the Osmo stat item. Uh, of course, we always need more counters. You can never have enough. Um, then have some maybe more helpers or configuration options for the Osmo stat item to have averaging, uh, min max, um, standard deviation, and, and those things. Um, uh, one big thing that has been touched uh, upon is fix the the issues with the separator. So the counters, as far as I can see, they are still called, um, or they're still separated with a period, but then there's some sanit sanitation script or sanitation function that replaces the periods with a colon to basically make them accessible via the control interface. Unfortunately, the statsd um, export format uses the colon as a separator for, for one thing. So this breaks there. Um, maybe we just want to have different um, functions depending on where we're outputting so we, so we can sanitize whatever we have as an input because uh, otherwise, yeah. Or we restrict um, the names even further. But yeah, we have to check that. And then, yeah, also make, configurable. make everything configurable. Um, and then, yeah, also add units to rate counter because I think that's uh, quite useful. Okay, so thank you. If there are no more questions. I have one simple question. Why did you choose this image? Yeah. Ah, okay, <laughs> right. So, well, this is a counter. It's a mobile counter. And uh, so, so I actually, I didn't Google, but I duck, duck, goat for uh, for counters, and the first images were those, and I thought, yeah, makes sense. Uh, and this is the the old counter. It's rock solid, also, but yeah, from open source. Uh,